Alright, welcome to Right On with John Crane, and this is part two of a three-part series that I'm doing on axe restoration, or just in general about, uh, you know, making an axe, making an axe handle, putting a head on it, that type of thing. And in part one, I took this uh, double bit axe head here, and in this particular case, I took it and I shined it to a, a mirror finish on there. And uh, if you haven't seen that video, go check out uh, part one of this series here. Um, but in today's video, what I'm going to be working on is uh, putting a handle on this uh, axe here. So I'm going to go through step-by-step -step process of uh, making a handle from scratch from a piece of hickory that I got. And uh, I'll show you all the steps on how I get that done. And uh, be sure to stay tuned for uh, part three of this series where I'll be making an axe sheath for uh, this axe out of some nice leather. So uh, let's head over to the bench and we'll get working right away on uh, making this axe handle. All right, I got a uh, couple axes here at the table and uh, here's a Puget Sound style axe. This is a plum axe. And, uh, and then I also have a uh, Grants Fours uh, Brooks axe here, uh, two double bit axes. And um, I got these two out because I'm looking at the, the handles here. And there's two things that I like about uh, these handles in particular. I like the shape and the feel of this uh, handle here on the Grants Fours Brooks. And uh, this handle here happens to be uh, 35 inches long. It's a nice length uh, for a handle there and uh, feels feels good in the hand. I, I, I just like uh, the good solid feel of the handle. It's a little bit thicker and uh, you can get a nice uh, grip on that. This handle here is a little bit longer on this Puget Sound style, a little bit thinner. The handle feels really nice too though. Uh, but quite a bit thinner in here. And then what I do really like about this handle is it's got a, uh, a big knob here down at the bottom. And uh, this knob here happens to be uh, an inch and three quarters uh, thick. And, uh, and this one here, this is quite a bit thinner. And if I put the calipers on here, right? This only an uh, inch and a quarter. And I think, you know, when you're milling uh, the wood up for an axe handle on here, uh, sometimes it's, it's easy just to mill this nice and flat uh, because in order to get that knob, you have to mill a thick piece the whole way and then take it down on here and just leave it right here. So I actually like doing that. And uh, so the dimensions that I'm gonna have uh, for this axe handle, I'm gonna do a 36 inch long axe handle, and then uh, inch and three quarters thick, I'm gonna shave it down so I can get that nice uh, knob on the bottom like this. I, I really like the feel of that. All right, when we look at the head of the axe here, there's a few things here that determine uh, what size we're gonna make the handle, what size I'm gonna cut the blank of hickory to start working on this. So if we look, here at the bottom of the eye of the axe here and uh, come in with some calipers. Right, the eye of the axe there on the bottom is two and three quarters. And then if we come to the top here, right, we got two and seven eighths here in the top of the eye. And so that's nice. Uh, nice to have it smaller on the bottom, bigger at the top. So when you uh, wedge the handle in there, uh, it really gets a good grip in there and uh, you know forms a, a nice shape in there that locks it into the head. So, uh, so just knowing those dimensions right there, this is how I'm gonna cut the, the blank of hickory here. So I'm gonna cut it at 36 inches here, three and a quarter here, and one and three quarters thick, so I can make that nice knob on the bottom of the handle. And then a grain pattern is gonna run 
this direction right here. It's very important that you get a nice straight grain piece of hickory or ash or, or that type of wood there. And uh, uh, take your time, you know, pick through the wood lots there and, uh, and get a nice piece. Here's the uh, piece of hickory here that I'm gonna be using for the ax handle today. And uh, if I spin this around and we look at the grain there, you can see that's uh, some nice straight grain hickory. Uh, sometimes it's hard to find. You really gotta uh, pick through to find uh, something really nice. You gotta go through several boards sometimes at the uh, lumber yard or at your wood supplier there. All right, here is a template that I made here. Uh, just added some uh, eighth inch Luan here, and I patterned it right off of this Grants Forest Brooks uh, ax just by laying it on top there and then just tracing around it and uh, cutting that pattern out on the bandsaw. Um, everything's the same except for right here. This handle is a little bit narrower where it goes into the eye the opening there on the eye is a little bit smaller, so I widen this uh, pattern up right here uh, so as to fit this ax that I'm working on. So next step here is to take this piece of hickory here and just lay this on top. I'll trace this. Just cut out uh, this profile here on the axe and cut off these side pieces here but I'm not gonna discard those I'm actually gonna use those for the next cut to cut the uh, profile in the other direction there so I'm gonna actually put these back on to the piece here right and then with these stacked up what I'm gonna do is come in with some tape Take those back on. All right, now that I got that taped on, I got my profile pattern uh, for the other direction here. I'll put this pattern on right here. Then get that nice and centered up. All right, I've just been uh, figuring out a little layout here on the ax handle. And this is very important here to start laying out some center lines. Uh, so I, I'm putting center lines on all sides here. Here's on the side, 
you know, front and back of this. And then also on the top there, I have center lines. Uh, and this is uh, good to keep in mind while shaping the handle here, because you want to keep this right in line with the handle. You don't want it, this to end up this way or this way or that type of thing. Uh, you want this to end up very straight. So it's good to, in this portion of it to really take some patience and time uh, and do it right and make sure that ax head gets aligned uh, just right. So now the next thing I gotta lay out here is on the, on the top, I'm gonna lay out the size of this eye here. So just uh, measuring this section right there, and that turns out to be uh, two and seven eighths uh, by five eighths thick. line down here where I have the arc drawn there. That's right about where I want the axe to shoulder up there. So this is going to come and hit right about there. And uh, some of this is going to be excess, but I, I always like to keep a like a quarter inch or so above the axe head. And uh, so that's where the axe is going gonna, is gonna to shoulder up right on that arc. Here's a little jig I made for the table saw here. And this is an angle jig, and this will slice off these angles right here. So cut off those four corners, and it's just uh, removing some material here. And uh, getting that ready, you know, just to kind of pre-shape uh, the head of the handle there. Now, if that will focus there for us, maybe. Uh, let's see. But anyway, you can see it there. So I am now going to uh, clamp this up into the vise here. And then uh, how I like to work this section right here is start working it with the um, angle grinder and the uh, disc sander there with some uh, coarse grit, start removing material. And just going slow and uh, working this down and uh, getting that head to fit real nice. How's it going? Yeah? How do you like your uh, your new collar? Hmm?
Alright, I'm going to use a pair of calipers here so I can uh, keep checking the thickness while I'm fitting this axe head here. So I'm going to set this. I know uh, the opening on the eye is 5 8 there. So I'm just setting these uh, calipers here to uh, just about 5 8 there. And then I can come in and then check. And I can see when I reach uh, the right thickness. sneak in here for a look at the uh, uh, top of the handle there and this is a, a time to be real sensitive there with the with the sander and keep checking the, the fit of the axe and taking a look and I'm not sure if we can uh, yeah see that's a good view right there you can start looking uh, right down inside there seeing where there's air gaps and where wood has to come off type of thing and just keep checking and uh, this is a good time just to go slow uh, and uh, have some patience take some time and just keep slowly uh, whittling away down at this until it slides on there and then once it slides on uh, the axe head will start leaving marks as you slide it back and forth and you can see where it's touching and those are the spots where you, you want to uh, take off some material. Yeah, it's a good way to do it is to put a little pencil on there and just mark the areas that you got to uh, sand away. Uh, remember my uh, grade school wood shop teacher, uh, every time you, you bring over your project and ask him if, you know, if that's enough sanding, you know, he'd come out with a big pencil and just go all over the whole thing and yeah, get back to the bench, kid. And uh, that guy also had a... Uh, if you were caught without safety glasses in that guy's shop, uh, he had a pair of, uh, he'd make you sit in the corner in a chair and he had a pair of safety glasses that he spray painted black and he'd put you, uh, those on you and sit you in the corner and say, all right, if you're not gonna wear your safety glasses, I'm gonna put you in the corner with these black glasses on and you're gonna see what it's like to be blind for the class. Yeah, old, uh, old Marty Mictus. All right, once you can start sliding it on, start pushing it on there, and then the ax head will start leaving these marks, and these are the exact areas that you gotta start removing material. All right, at this time, uh, 
a nice step to do is to slide this slide this head on here and wedge it on pretty good. And then you can hold this ax upside down and give it a shot from the bottom here with a dead blow. And what that will do, that will start to seat the ax down onto the handle there, right? And it starts cutting in a shoulder. And then at the same time here, uh, when you pop this handle back out and you can see the marks uh, that the ax head leaves in there, then you can see more of where to grind down type of thing. But that's the way to do it. You hang it upside down, put the ax head on there and give it a few blows on the bottom of the handle. Here's a closer look at that ax head and uh, so I just tap that in upside down and that seated that in there. And, uh, but now in order to get that out, it's nice to have a little jig. And uh, all this is is a couple of four by fours and I got some uh, foam pad there glued to the top. And uh, that's nice to come in there, you know, with the, uh, the dead blow and just give it a, a few shots and, uh, and pop that out. And then you can see the where it's starting to seed up there. Now those are the spots there. You start uh, removing material in order for that to, uh, you know, this one here, I want it to shoulder down right around in here. I got a line here about the height where I want the bottom of that ax to be. So I'll keep uh, grinding away there with the sander and keep setting it down and uh, getting it nicer and nicer. All right, little by little, when the wood starts to curl up and it starts to seat into a nice shoulder right there, that's what you're looking for. I like to see that all the way across right there. So I'm gonna keep working on that till I get that nicely seated. All right, that's looking pretty good and that's just about where I want it uh, on the ax there. Uh, the only thing is, uh, if you look at the top here, uh, when I'm hammering that on and I'm hanging it, see it's not touching here, but it's touching here. And the ax is just uh, tilted just a hair. So uh, for me to correct that, I got to sand down this area a little bit over here, and then it will seat a little bit further on that section there. All right, I really like how that shouldered up really nice on there. I feel like it's got a good firm grip and uh, just got barely got a little bit of a curl almost all the way around there. I don't want too big of a curl, like it's sitting on a big thick shoulder, but just sitting on the thickness of the wood there. And uh, looks like it's seated up in here nice, it's even. Uh, the axe head's nice and straight, and uh, that looks really good. All right, next step is to start softening uh, these edges here, and I'm going to go after that with a router bit. All right, now I'm going to start uh, shaping uh, the handle here in the handle section here and take off these corners, and just to hog off a bunch of material uh, quickly... I'm just going to use uh, this router bit right here, and it's just a, a big round over bit there. So I'm going to hog off some material off of the corners there, and then uh, and then I can go back to work uh, working that on the belt sander and sanding the corners down.
All right, now I'm just getting ready to do some shaping of the handle here. And I'm gonna do that uh, with this belt sander here. I got it hooked up to the vacuum for the dust. And I'm just gonna start uh, uh, sculpting this handle down. a good time to look at the handle and to really fine tune it and uh, that's a nice thing about getting uh, making a custom handle uh, as opposed to going and buying a handle at the store at the hardware store that type of thing uh, this when you make it for yourself you got a chance to fit it to your own hands and uh, make it feel really good and so obviously you want a handle that uh, you're going to get a nice grip on. Uh, I like having the, the bigger knob down here. That's why I like going with a, a thicker piece of wood. But uh, just uh, now's the time for uh, some good patience and just to really go over it and feel it. And uh, if there's any things that you want to get out to go over it with the sander. And uh, just another note on that. You know, other options, you know, this isn't uh, the only trick in the book as far as making these. Uh, uh, you can use uh, a draw knife instead of a sander uh, type of thing. And to be able to, you know, put this in the uh, vise there and start shaping it with a draw knife. And that's a great way to do it too. So uh, maybe I'll do another video as well showing how to shape uh, one of these with a draw knife. There's just uh, so many different ways to go about it, so many different tools, and uh, so many paths up the mountain uh, to get to the peak. All right, I got all the sanding done with the uh, belt sander and the disc sander, and now I'm gonna go after it with the uh, random orbit sander here, and I'm gonna start uh, with 60 grit. And uh, just another side note, if you do use a random orbit sander and you got like a six inch or five inch, uh, these are great little uh, sanding blocks here. It's a little Velcro block, and you can just stick your hook and loop paper right to that. And uh, it's an awesome way uh, just to stick some paper on there quick and a great little sanding block. So I'm going to uh, put the mask on here and uh, do a little sanding. trim off a little bit of this excess up here not to the final length yet but just uh, trim a little bit off here and then I'm gonna come in here with the bandsaw and cut a slit 
in this direction right here, right down my uh, center line that I can still see there. And that's gonna make the slot there for uh, the tapered wedge. but I need to make a, a tapered wedge to go in here and the ax head goes on and then tap that wedge into this slot here. And uh, the traditional wood used for uh, making that wedge is a piece of poplar. And I think the thought behind that is that it's a soft wood and it can conform and um, actually compress a little bit when it goes in there and form into the shape as you tap that wedge in rather than a piece of hardwood uh, that's just, uh, you know, not gonna conform to that space. All right, I'm over at the little belt sander, and what I want to do is I want to pre-fit this wedge into the top here, and specifically I want to round these edges just a little bit so when this goes into these tips right here, it fits real nice and it's not struggling to get in there. All right, now it's time to Hang, hang the axe head here. And so I'm gonna line up side A with side A there and get the right fit. And give this a nice push down there. And then same routine as before, turn this upside down, get the dead blow mallet, give it a few whacks. And then check. Oh yeah, see that's really nice. It's shouldering up there, just right, just right. I'll bring you in for a close-up on that. Yeah, I don't know if it's uh, able to see there, but that's shouldering up, seating up really nice there on the hickory. It looks like it's a really nice tight fit all the way around. I'm really happy with that. All right, the setup for this operation is you need something really sturdy on the floor. So I just got a, a piece of wood here, like an old log type of deal. And I just put a, a towel on the top there to protect the bottom of the handle. And then I'm going to tap this wedge right in here, right? And uh, I'm just going with some uh, tight bond wood glue in there. And there's all kinds of different products you can put in there. A product called swell lock and uh, you know some people don't like going with the glue but this is the method i like and it seems to work uh, really good all right so i'm gonna coat this with some glue first i'm gonna try to get a little bit of glue down here so i'm just gonna put a little bit of a, a tapered wedge right here you can't get much down in there but you can get a little bit All right, let that seep down in there. And then take uh, this wedge here. And 
you know, brush, finger, whatever works here, right? And uh, yeah, give this a nice coat with the glue. I like putting excess glue. I like see glue, see glue coming out. And uh, sometimes too much is good. Not all the time, but. So yeah, just a nice coat of glue right here. Some of the bristles coming out. All right, and you're gonna put a little bit more and I know it's gonna shoot out all over the place. All right. Now, set that back there, pull out that little wedge, and time to slide this in here. And then, right, put the ax, the bottom of the handle there, down on the log so it's firmly sitting down there, and then start to tap the wedge in. Sometimes it's nice to get a good square block on this, and so you get an even pressure. All right, let's seat it uh, down in there real nice. And looks like it's, it's good and tight in there. And now I'm gonna head over to the bandsaw and slice that off. looking sharp some streaks on there I just cleaned off some of the glue with a little uh, acetone there and uh, I'll polish it back up with some more of that frog lube here shortly and then just on the top here I'm just gonna touch up this top edge with a little uh, sandpaper and uh, carefully right uh, don't want to uh, scrape into any of the finish here of the polished axe head all right, I'm down here on the floor of the shop because I need a nice sturdy base here. I got my uh, letter stamp kit out and I got to put a little mark here right in the handle. And I got to make sure that's all lined up just nice. I don't want to double bounce or anything and then just give it a nice shot with the hammer. D blind, Dan blind. All right. Yeah, now, now Dan blind. He's a, a great friend of mine from New Jersey, and I've known Dan since uh, third grade. And uh, me and him, uh, in our childhood and teens, we just worked on so many projects together, ripping apart old engines, building all kinds of stuff, riding motorcycles, and uh, so. Uh, this axe here, I just stamped his name in there, and uh, I'm going to be sending this out in the mail to Dan. So I just wanted to put uh, uh, stamp his name in there with the letter stamp before I get to putting some finish on this. So I'll just uh, touch up right there. And then... Now uh, I'm ready to put some finish on and the finish that I like to go with uh, for this is uh, boiled linseed oil mixed with uh, pine tar. And uh, this is just a, a great combination and it's got a lot of old history as far as uh, you know, using this on boats for uh, waterproofing and uh, even using on the hulls of ships and that kind of thing. Uh, to keep them from leaking in the water type of deal. So pine tar uh, 
yeah, check it out. Look it up. There's, uh, I think there's lots of people that got different videos, even on how to make your own pine tar. And uh, it's, a, it's a wild process that you do uh, burn in um, some pine, you know, in a barrel and letting it cook down. And this is what seeps out after burning. So uh, I like to go with a 60-40 a combination on this stuff. So uh, 60 on the linseed oil and 40 on the, on the pine tar and give it a good mix. I just mixed up a, a nice batch of this. And uh, it's good to stir it up. And when you're making it, you wanna heat it a little bit because uh, by that pine tar, that's just like uh, some old black strap molasses right there. It's some really thick, thick stuff, but it's just a great uh, preservative for putting on the handle here. And uh, it's great for all those kinds of tools and the finish just came, comes out really nice. So get yourself some pine tar, some linseed oil, mix up a batch and uh, start spreading it around. All right. I'm gonna tape off this nice head here with a little bit of tape, and then I'm gonna start wiping on some of this uh, pine tar linseed oil. All right, got the gloves on and a little rag, and uh, yeah, just give this a little dip in the pine tar solution, and just start applying some of this here. And I just mixed this batch up of this pine tar uh, linseed oil. So actually I heated it uh, while I was making it to mix the two together. And uh, right now it's just, it's just perfect because it's, it's nice and warm and it's gonna soak right into the wood there. Good to go over it with the heat gun and to help all that soak right into the wood. All right, there's the double bit X uh, all finished up and ready to roll. Uh, but I will put a few more coats on this, uh, put, maybe I'll put about four coats on this and, uh, each night just let it sit by the fire in there and dry. And, uh, yeah, I think it's great, uh, sending this off to Dan Blythe there in Jersey. And I think he's gonna put this to some good use out there. He loves old tools and, uh, talk about a, a talented craftsperson there, Dan Blythe, welding, fabricating, all kinds of stuff. And, uh, just a great all around guy. So I'm um, happy to send this out to him. And uh, I think uh, I think he's going to dig it. And uh, so uh, so the next uh, step in this process here, you know, this is part two of a three part video here. And uh, part three, I'm going to be making a leather sheath for this to protect that. You know, this axe is pretty darn sharp now. And uh, It'd be nice to have a little leather sheath for it. So part three, I'm going to be getting back and doing a little leather work, crafting a leather sheath. And uh, yeah, if you like these videos, um, I sure do uh, like putting them together. And I love working on this axe. I think this axe just came out awesome. Uh, but if you like these videos, please give a thumbs up. Leave a comment in there. Tell me what you're thinking about the, the axe and the projects and those things. And uh yeah, tell your friends, subscribe, uh, you know, give them a heads up, maybe send my video over their way. Uh, I got lots more coming, all kinds of stuff going on in the shop here. And uh, all right, well, I hope all you guys are doing great and uh, I'll see you soon.